Barclays Center. Brett, your mark. Thank you, Lou. Uh, glad to be here with everyone and looking forward to hosting uh, Paulie and, and Danny on the 29th as well as um, Amir and Chris, and obviously they'll be joining us shortly. But, um, you know, from a building perspective, obviously we're committed to boxing. We're thrilled to be hosting our second PBC fight. Our first event was just a, a resounding success. Um, it was our biggest gate since we've opened Barclays Center as it relates to boxing. It was the most highly attended event. Um, the atmosphere and the environment was electrifying, and we think we'll be able to duplicate and replicate you know, that experience for our fans uh, on the 29th. I'm thrilled that, that Spike will be our partner. They have a great edge and hit, a very edgy and hip cool about you know, their broadcast and how they do their business. And that's a perfect fit for Brooklyn. And obviously just excited that Paulie's on the card because, you know, for, for us, you know, in, in bringing boxing back to Brooklyn, um, it, was all, it was always about bringing fights that meant something nationally. Um, but it was also about nurturing and, and fostering the careers of, of Brooklyn fighters. And there's no bigger fighter in Brooklyn than Paulie Malinaji. He's a friend. He's fought numerous times at the Barclays Center. So welcoming him back uh, after a, a, you know, a year away from the sport um, is, is just terrific for us. Obviously, we we're also thrilled to have Danny fight in our building for the first time. Um, and I'm also excited to be um, you know, working with Amir Khan, you know, we, we, he and I have become friendly and, you know, I had always hoped that Amir would call Barclays Center home and he's been in our building for Nets games and, and other boxing events. So for him to be in our ring is, is obviously an honor and a pleasure. And then Chris Algieri, I mean, he, he and Provotnikov, um, you know, last June, um, probably had one of the biggest and the most electrifying fights ever at Barclays Center and for him to come back. Um, and fight again is terrific for us. He brings a, a big Long Island fan base, which we'll certainly hope to tap into again. So this should be a really, really big night for Brooklyn boxing, for boxing in Brooklyn in general, and certainly the PBC. So we're thrilled to be a partner, uh, and we look forward to the 29th. Thank you, Brett. And now um, to what will be our other main event of the evening, the final fight of the evening on Spike um, TV on May 29th at the Barclays Center, from the Barclays Center. Um, the first participant I'm going to introduce is the pride of Huntington, Long Island. As Brett mentioned, his career best victory took place at the Barclays Center when he upset Ruslan Provodnikov and really established himself as a force uh, in, in boxing. Um, he's been promoted by Guardia Star Boxing. Um, Chris Algieri, with a record of 20 and 1, uh, is, I know, looking forward to this great opportunity versus Amir Khan. So, Chris, can, can you say a few words? Hi, everybody. Thanks, Lou, for the introduction. Um, I'd just like to thank um, Lou Bell Entertainment for working with my promotion, Star Boxing, and Joe DeGuardia. Um, it's uh, a real honor and a pleasure to be back at the Barclays Center. Um, as you both mentioned, that you know, we, we fought there about a year ago last June, had a great fight. Uh, won my first world title versus Bruce Montanikov, and uh, I'm also very excited to be fighting uh, on Spike TV. And thank you for um, you know for hosting hosting the event. It's, uh, it's a whole new fan base and a whole new network to fight on. I'm, I'm very excited about it all. Thank you, Chris. Um, this next gentleman, I do use that word uh, seriously because he's a gentleman, is one of the most talented fighters in the game. Um, from England. Former world champion with a terrific record of 30 and 3, Amir Khan. Hi, everyone. Um, and thanks for being on today. Just want to say hi to all the press, the media. Um, Brett is a friend of mine now from the Barclays. I mean, I'm very excited to fight the Barclays Stadium, you know, the Barclays Center, sorry. Um, I've been there a few times, and I've always said I want to come over here and give New York uh, a huge fight so that they, they need. And uh, bring box in there, and also, you know, I have a big fan base in New York. I'm sure Chris Algieri has a big fan base over there as well. But um, you know, we're gonna come, and we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna make noise uh, noises. Um, also, the fight's gonna be on Spike TV, which I'm very excited for. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the whole event on the 29th of May. I'm 
Friday, so I hope you're all going to be there cheering us all on. Thank you. And we'll open it up now to questions. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question or have a comment, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. This will place your question in the order it was received. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Our first question comes from Greg Logan with Newsday. Hi. Uh, uh, I have a question for each boxer. Uh, uh, first for Chris. Uh, I wonder if you could just tell me, you've had a little time to work with John David Jackson now. Uh, do you see him uh, changing you in any significant way? Hi, Greg. Hi. Uh, pleasure to hear from you. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's been a great turning camp. Um, it's We've been learning quite a bit. Um, John has been bringing out a lot of aspects of, of my style and, and, the, and the things that I'm able to do in the ring that I haven't had the opportunity to show just yet. Um, I think that, you know, um, we're, we're both very excited about this fight and, and what we're going to be able to do on Fight Night on May 29th. And um, it, it's, been, it's been fun as well. You know, learning and, and, and doing new aspects to, to sports that I love um, has been uh, an eye-opening experience and, and, and an amusing and an enjoyable one for myself. And also just taking on uh, somebody like Amir Khan with his experience and uh, and the types of people he's fought. Uh, you know, I know you've kind of made the step up in these last two fights to uh, a higher level, but uh, this could have been an opportunity for you to take a, a little bit easier fight. Why did you uh, uh, keep it this, this tough right here? You know, I've never been that guy to take an easy route or an easy fight for well, um... You know, I've, I've come up very fast in, in, in both of the, the, the sports that I've come up in. Um, you know, even at a young age when I was kickboxing, I, I was taking on big fights and guys with a lot more experience. And um, even in my boxing, my, my young boxing career, um, it's been a constant step up, you know, my, my entire career. Um, I, I have not been one of those guys who's been um, working along gingerly. You know, I've, I've been excited to uh, tackle big, big opponents and, and, and big fights on big stages. So um, this is just you know, Paul, with the course of my career. Okay. And if I could ask uh, one of Amir, uh, you had a, a possibility of fighting Mayweather until he made the fight with Pacquiao. And now, as soon as uh, his last fight with Pacquiao ended, there was taught, they mentioned your name uh, wow. on the stage there as a next possible opponent. Uh, how critical is winning this fight toward preserving that dream of, of fighting May Mayweather? Do you see it as part of the big picture? Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, winning this fight is everything to me. Um, I'm not looking past this Chris Algieri fight because I know it's a very dangerous fight for me. You know, stylistically, it is very dangerous and I'm not going to be looking past it. Um, and if I do, you know, I've made mistakes. I've looked past fights and I've made mistakes and... You know, it's going to put me right back where I don't want to be. Uh, so I have to be focused. I have to be, you know, disciplined in training camp and not looking past this Chris Alju. I know the, 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 there's bigger fights out there like the Mayweather and stuff, but, you know, I think this is all a test for me to stay focused and win this fight and then go from there, really. Okay, one last follow-up for me is uh, you, you call Chris dangerous. Uh, he's not known as a big puncher. It could be a, a good boxing match. Uh, what do you see as as the danger that Chris poses to you? Uh, technically, you know, I think overall he's a, he's a very good boxer, moves as well, and you know he makes a lot of fights fall short. And you know he, he's dangerous in that sense where he's very skillful. You, know, you have to be on your A game to be. You know, I mean, obviously I've been watching a lot of videos and stuff, and you know against Provodnikov and even the Pacquiao fight. You know, there's some good things he, he did in them fights, which. Could be dangerous for me, you know, going into this fight if I'm not going to be on my on my A game. So I have to be, you know, one step ahead and make sure I don't make any mistakes because, um, you know, Chris Algieri seems a guy that if you make a mistake, he's going to make you pay for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from Chris McKenna with the Daily Star. Uh, uh, my first question to Amir. How is it going? I I didn't you're right. You could. I mean, there was a lot more bigger fights out here this time. You you were criticised quite heavily for taking this fight. 
But what can you do in this fight to, to put your name really up there to get the bigger fights again? What, what are you going to have to do? Are you going to have to knock out Chris to make a real impression? No, I look, I mean, you know, there's people putting this fight down. And I, and I don't know why, because then there is. Uh, he's won a world title. He's been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao in his last fight, so the amount of experience and he, he's got from being here with the A-class opponents, you know, not many fighters have that experience. Also, on top of that, you know, uh, he, he's a very good boxer. He moves well, boxes well. So, you know, I have to definitely be on my A game. I mean, all this, about what people are saying, you know, I don't, they probably think you know, Amir is going to probably think is it's going to be a walk in the park and make a mistake and, 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 and probably lose this fight. But I think every fight seriously, you know, I've made that mistake a long time ago by taking fights thinking they're going to be easy. And then, you know, like, for example, the Danny Garcia fight, or, you know, I thought these are fights are going to be a walk in the park and I went in the fight and, you know, end up getting hurt and, and, and not winning the fight. So, I'm never going to be in a position of that again, thinking any fight is going to be easy. I mean, every fight I walk into, every person I got in front of me is going to be in there to win the fight. So it's, you know, listen to Chris Algeri, he seems he wants to win this fight. And that's what only motivates me because it makes me train even harder because I know that I've got someone in front of me who wants to win this fight. So, I mean, I'm not really listening to what people are saying about the future fights and what, where, where this fight can take me. It's all about this fight for me. Do you feel there is though a pressure on you to deliver because you've you've got to really send out a message that you, you you're still a big name? Definitely, definitely there is. I mean, you know, there's um there's there's a lot of pressure on me in, in every fight because they want to see me perform, and obviously there's always a bigger picture at the other fight. You know, so um you know, end of the day, I, I'm I'm still you know there's, I'm still fighting top guys, and I believe Chris is one of the top guys in boxing. And you were quoted over the weekend as saying that Leonard Ellaby has, has mentioned Mayweather to you. September's obviously an issue. What would be the ideal plan there to, to happen? Would it be hope for that he puts it back to November or or can you fight late in September? Well, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not looking past anything. I'm not looking past this fight. I'm just going to be, hopefully, I'll, t- I'll tell you everything after the fight. You know, we can talk about this at the moment. All of, all, all, and what's on my mind is Chris Algieri fight. I'm not, I don't have anything else on my mind. All right, all right. Thanks, Amir. Thanks. Our next question comes from Ron Lewis with the Times of London. Hi, Amir. How you doing? Hey, Ron. You're right. Yeah, not bad, mate. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's quite similar thing, but um, you left Golden Boy after after your contract ran out. And you're on yeah. BBC now. What was your thinking behind um, making that move? And BBC, I think, is brilliant because it gives it, it's going to give more fans to tune in to get to see you. I mean, I think it's going to be good for the boxes. It's going. Um, I mean, being on Spike, I mean, the viewing figures are going to be great. You know, obviously, being with Team Al and also, you know, I'm going to follow wherever they say what's the right move for me. So. At the end of the day, it's not like I'm, I'm making less money or anything. You know, I'm still, uh, you know, doing well financially, and obviously, I'm getting more people to watch me fight. Um, you know, uh, hopefully on Spike and and on PBC. Um, obviously, your name's been linked really with Mayweather, not just the last week, for the last sort of three years. And you're with Heyman, yeah. and, and uh, Mayweather's with Heyman. Has he ever said something to you like what you have to do? or what your chances are of getting in the ring with Mayweather? I mean, look, Mayweather is the best fighter in the world, and obviously you have to put on great performances to get that fight, to get that fight against him. You have to look good. You have to, um, you know, you have to shine, really. And it's all about working hard, training hard, uh, and, and, and having good performances in the ring. And to do to do that, and to have best performances in the ring, I can't, you know, take camp easy and work very hard in the camp. And I have to be very focused. So, yeah, you know, I mean, there's always words there, you know, for the last couple of years, that fight was going to happen. But no, I'm just going to be taking every fight step by time now and hopefully, um, you know, put on great promises. And that fight, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, then obviously, there's something I've always wanted. Is, is that what Alex is saying to you as well? Concentrate on this fight and then we'll, you know, see what can be. Yeah, Virgil, my trainer. Yeah, Virgil, my trainer. And, 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 I'll, and everyone have said, look, 
you have a, you have a fight in front of you, and Chris will do you no joke. No, I can't make, I can't go into this fight, I think it's going to be easy, and, and, and you know, we know, I mean, in boxing you can get beat, and there's always guys there who are skillful, you know, who can beat you, so I have to be that one step ahead, I can't really take this fight lightly, and think it's going to be easy, and then, you know, lose the fight, and that's all my dreams, to shot to fight the big names in boxing. Chris is a very big opponent for me in that sense, because obviously, by losing this fight, it'll, 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 it'll ruin my dreams, you know, to fight the biggest names in boxing. So I have to be very focused in this fight. Um, I'm fighting him at his own backyard. You know, I know what it's like to fight someone in their own backyard. Like, for example, when I fought Lamont Peterson, you have to try that a bit harder to win that fight. And, you know, he's going to have a big crowd there as well. So I have to be very focused. I have to, you know, definitely keep keep, keep on, keep, keep, keep the game plan strong and just win, win your arms and win fight. Our next question comes from Kel Damsey with Black Sports Online. Uh, my first question is for Chris. Chris, you were in the mid ring with Manny Pacquiao before, and obviously there's a shoulder injury that he says he's had for quite some time. Is there anything that you felt when you were in there, like maybe a difference or saw a difference in him in last week's fight? Uh, that was different than when he even fought you? Um, I didn't really see anything uh, physically. I, I saw a little more mental. He, he seemed um, more focused for my fight, to tell you the truth. Um, even at the weigh-in and things, he, he you know, he, he was very kind of bubbly and smiley at the Mayweather weigh-in. It uh, wasn't that way with myself when we were in China. Um, but that's neither here nor there. You never know if that could, that could mean anything or be anything. Um, but that's kind of a, 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 hard, a hard question to uh, you know, to, to say for someone else, answer someone else. Definitely. And what does this fight mean for you going forward? Uh, obviously, a win against Amir, the top name in boxing, would be wonders for your career. Just kind of tell us a little bit about what a win would mean personally for your career and moving forward. Yeah, I don't want to speak for Amir or for any other fighter out there, but uh, we're all competitors. We're all out there to win. Um, you know, there's a reason we all do this. Uh, at this at this stage of the game, at the elite level, you have got to have a burning desire for competition and and to be a winner. Um, you know, we, our, um, Amir is a is a, a champion, a former champion himself. I'm a former champion and champion myself. Um, you know, so that that will and desire to, to always want to win is just there. And um, you know, there's a lot of questions that are being asked, like, well, you, you know, you got to win. Of course, you have to win this fight. That's, that's how boxing is. That's how competition. Is you got to win to get the big fight. Um, and that's one of the great things about this sport is uh, when you keep winning, good things happen. You know, um, so, that, of course, you know, we, we're all very hungry to get to get this victory and to move on with our careers. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the exact same place. You know, this is, a, this is a huge fight and huge opportunity. And as with any other fight, I want to win. Definitely. Uh, Mir, a question for you. Uh, assuming that you saw the fight this weekend like everyone else, did you see anything in, in Mayweather that maybe you would have taken advantage of? Something you saw that other people didn't see? You know, obviously you're concentrating on your fight right now, but moving yeah. forward, if he's a future opponent, what did you see from him? Does he look a step slower? Did he look crazy? Or is there something that you saw that you could take advantage of? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was there as a boxing fan. You know, I'm literally I'm only like an hour away from Vegas, so I went there for, to watch the fight. And um, I just enjoyed the atmosphere and everything. And, um, I mean, I just made it look great. I mean, he did what he had to do to win the fight. I mean, was, his accuracy was, you know, nothing but the best. And he was catching Pacquiao with some good clean shots, whereas Pacquiao was falling short at times. And, I mean, Mayweather is Mayweather. You know, that's the way he fights. He's a very skillful fighter who's very patient and tries to, you know, makes his opponent make mistakes. And that's what I liked about him. Obviously, you see him, his work is dropping Tremendously, you know, obviously because of his age and stuff. But there are a few things I saw there that I've not seen before, you know, which was, I mean, he takes a good shot. I mean, he does panic. And um, the only way to catch someone like him is with speed and explosiveness, which money had. But money, I don't think, used as much speed and explosiveness in, in the fight. But, um, yeah, you know, I enjoyed it. I what he had to do, and obviously, I'm sure... You know, all those people who were telling him that he was never going to fight Pacquiao and never going to beat Pacquiao, he's gone there and done that. All right, thank you. Uh, good luck to both of you guys. Yeah, I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Kel Damsey with Black Sports Online. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
comes from David Anderson with the Daily Mirror. Hello, I'm in the UK. Hi, David, you're right. Ron, uh, I mean, I, I know we're still going on a lot about now, but one last point on it. I don't know if you, you heard what Floyd Senior was saying about you. I think the, the guy said, uh, you know, would you fight? Would it, Floyd fight you next? He said, yeah, you'd be an easy fight. And uh, I was wondering what you, you, you saw that, really, with disrespect. Yeah, I mean, you're going to say it's an easy fight, obviously. Um, but, you know, before anything, I've got Chris Aldew really to focus on. So he, he can say what he wants, really. Uh, maybe. They want me to do, uh, they want me not to focus on my next fight against Chris. I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do what I have to do. I'm gonna go into this next fight and win this next fight, and hopefully, you know, be smart and be, be you know, not let anything get come in front of me in any way or distract, distract me really, because I think that's where mistakes can happen. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna answer any questions from first team or anyone, you know, who are gonna, you know, try putting me down. Or saying that you know the fight can happen at the moment, the fight's not happening with me and Floyd at the moment. The only fight that's happening is between me and Chris Algeria. And there's the box can happen after the fight. I mean, I'm, we we only three, three, four weeks away from the fight now, so this is this is um, crunch time now to focus and you know, not not let anything in. And then just, I just like to, you know, your, your old friend Eddie Earn was uh, again wondering well, why are you fighting Chris Algieri when you could have fought Cal Burke and Cal Burke's now got a bigger fight against Frankie Gavin at the old two, you know, 24 hours later. Uh, I must have amused you to hear that as well, haven't you? Yeah, you do hear that. You know, obviously I could have fought Cal Burke and the UK, obviously I can only, I only want to fight in, in uh, end of May. I mean, I don't want to go into June because of Ramadan coming up and stuff. And whoever it was against, you know, even even um, if it was against Floyd or whatever, obviously I've been taking Ramadan off, you know, and also I don't want to be um, going into Ramadan tired after after a fight, going straight into Ramadan, fasting. I need to give my body a break where I've done that before, where I've gone, I've, 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 um, I've had a fight, and I've gone straight into Ramadan, back to back. I mean, it's too much for our body to take, and obviously I need to look after my body and everything. So, so yeah. The Cal Brook, I mean, look who Cal Brook is fighting. You know, and the day the guy's a world champion. And he should be fighting the likes of, you know, the, the Bradleys out there and the big names in boxing. Like I'm doing, obviously, I'm I'm fighting Chris Algieri, who just come out, the, come out of the ring in his last fight against Manny Pacquiao. I mean, you've got Cal Brook there, who's the world champion, who's in his last fight. But, you know, never heard of the guy he's, he fought. And now he's fighting another no-name fighter with no ranking or anything, so... And the day, you know, that name doesn't really bother me anymore because I know he's not even doing anything. The only thing Cal Brook's name gets him named get, gets pushed to me is because he holds a title. If he didn't have a title, I don't think it means anything to me or boxing. Yeah. So, so you're just like you said there, I mean, like you're you're, you're certainly fighting against Chris Algieri. You know, he's he's fought Manny Parker he's bigger than Brook against Gavin at, at the deal too, really. Yeah, then, I mean, Chris Algieri just come off a win against um, Fontenacoff, which I saw the other day and I thought, you know, it was a very good fight and he boxed very smart and, you know, I got against a guy who's a, who's a good pressure fighter and a big puncher and, and then against Manny Pacquiao who is one of the quickest fighters in the world. So, I think um, if you look at the names of Chris Algeri's last a few opponents and look at Kel Brook's last few opponents, I think everything it'll just say the name will speak itself. Thank you, Amir. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Eddie Goldman with No Holds Barred. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. First question for Chris. Chris, in this fight, there's been a lot of discussion, you know, what Amir is going to do in his next fight and all this. What you, You're in some ways being overlooked in this, tell us what you think your advantages are over Amir and why you think you're going to be able to win this fight. You know, all the talk is, is um, none of my concerns, to tell you the truth. I'm focused on, on training, preparing the best that I can for this fight. Um, you know, I've been, I've been working hard and we've been working on a, new, a lot of new things with John David Jackson, uh, getting great sparring so far. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just a very hungry fighter at this point. You know, I'm, I'm 
I'm coming off my first loss as a professional, um, and watching Pacquiao and Mayweather fight this past weekend has only, you know, spurred me on even that much more, made me even that much more of a hungry fighter. So, um, you know, it's just it's it's one of those things. You got a guy who's going to be in great shape and really hungry for the for the win, um, you know. And I think that that's that's a big advantage in, in any fight. And Amir, let me ask you, just focusing on this fight, what you think your advantages are over Chris? You said you watched his fight recently with Provodnikov, where he won. What do you think your advantages are? Yeah, but I've always had advantages of speed, uh, the movement, the power, you know. Um, and experience is something that I have on my side. You know, when I remember a couple of years ago when I was fighting the guys, who were, uh, you know, a lot more experienced than me. And I was going there and beating them guys and I'm um, in a position where I'm probably the most, ex- one of the most top guys who is experienced and good experience right? and fighting guys you know, who have less fights than me. But you can't really take that lightly, really, because obviously I was once in Chris Algeri's position when I had one loss and I was going up against, you know, uh, the top guys in boxing and I beat them guys, so... You know, I can't, I can't go into this fight thinking it's going to be an easy fight or I'm going to win this fight because I was one Chris Algeri's position. When I was getting people telling me that, you know, you're not going to make it or you're not going to win this fight, and I was on the dog, and I went there and I proved everybody wrong. Amir, you fought in New York before. Chris is going to be the hometown guy in this fight. What, what effect do you think? You're obviously very well known in New York, too. What do you think the effect is going to be having a fight in Brooklyn, in New York? I've always wanted to fight in Brooklyn. Um, you know, when I fought, I fought at the Madison Square um, for my first fight in 2009 against Paulie. And then from there, um, I always wanted to uh, come back to New York. Obviously, the fan base over there is huge. Uh, it's, in a way, it's like second home for me because obviously my wife lives in Staten Island. So you know, I, I got married in New York and... I spend a lot of time in New York, I travel there back and forth and, you know, but we live in England originally, but I spend a lot of time in New York and America itself, so for me, you know, every time I used to be walking the streets in New York, I used to have everybody asking me, when are you going to be fighting again in New York? We want to see you fight in New York and and also when, I, when I'm when i at the Barclays, um, I've been there to a couple of Nets games and um, people have always asked me, we, want, we need you back in the box. We need you. We need you back in New York. We need you to fight at the box. Kind of. So, I think it's time now. You know, I'm always, I have promised them I will come back, and obviously I'm coming back fighting one of their home fighters. You know, so I, and I know by fighting a home fighter, you have to work a bit harder because obviously he's gonna have maybe a little bit more fun than me. Which, um, but I mean, you know, time will tell. We'll see how it all goes, but. I'm going to be focused with everything. I'm going to stay calm and hopefully come fight night. I'm going to be ready for everything that Chris, Chris Algeri brings, uh, brings to the table, and I'm going to be ready, yeah. All right. Good luck to everybody in the fight. Thank you. Our next question comes from Declan Taylor with the Sun. <laughs> Hi, man. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good, good. Um, just a quick one. In um, in Vegas over the weekend, you were getting mobbed everywhere. You went by fans and stuff. What are they What are they saying to you at this point? Because a lot of the time they've been constantly asking you about Floyd and stuff. Has that subsided yeah. at all, or is that still the kind of message from them? Yeah, I mean, everybody just was talking about that big one, big fight. And, oh, you should fight Floyd, you should fight Floyd. But you know, I was telling them all, I'm fighting Chris Algieri next. And... Um, and that for me is a very tough fight because you know I need to win this fight if I need to go anywhere near the big names in boxing and this is you know, in front of me so they were you know they were very supportive um, and they were all I was getting a lot of respect in the biggest sport like I said you know this is this is it's time to fight Chris Algeri I mean I'm not going to be fighting Floyd Mayweather uh, yet till till I win this fight so yeah I just did. I just listened and obviously I was being respectful back and meeting fans and greeting fans and not very really. How, how inspiring was that to be part of all that at the weekend just see it first time? Because it was something quite special, wasn't it? Oh, definitely. It was, it was massive, obviously, having two big names. I've been to both big fights, you know, where normally you get 
Pacquiao fighting uh, a big name. Uh, I've been to a couple of Pacquiao fights. I've been to a couple of Mayweather fights. But when you go to the fight, which is you know two big names fighting each other, it, it was huge. Obviously, money had the bigger crowd. It seemed to me, and um, but you know Floyd just did what he had to do. Obviously, it was, it was full of um, you know high-profile people, celebrities, and everything. And I was sat amongst them, and it, it, it was something I want to be doing some one day. You know, I want to be in the ring having millions of people watching you around the world, and also. Having um, you know, high-profile people watching you ringside. Just one final one, just a bit of clarification on something. You had Adrian Broner in your ear as well most of the weekend. Yeah, yeah. We saw. What what was that all about? I think Adrian just one of them guys who just kind of kind of kind of just wants to jump on the bandwagon really and tries to get a little bit of hype. Uh, the fight, I I, I told. My my advice out him and to get me that fight before we even got the Chris Algieri fight. And Adrian, to me, seemed to not want the fight. But in front of the cameras, he's talking, you know, big fights. But when it comes down to signing a contract, you don't want to sign anything. I mean, there's a few names we were looking at, uh, and, but we end up with Chris Algieri. So, you know, Adrian was one of them, and he just didn't want it. So, obviously, I had to move on and go on to someone else. Nice our, last question, our last question comes from Carl Britag with Fight News. Yeah, Mir. Uh, actually, I was just going to ask you about Broder, too. But uh, I also have one other question. Um, is it true, I read somewhere, is it true that you've ruled out fighting in September if, if uh, uh, Mayweather fight or whatever does come to pass after this fight? Uh, will, will you not fight in September? No, no, I mean, I'm not ruled out because I, it is possible I could fight in September, yeah. Um, because the, the, he normally fights mid-September and also um, Ramadan is going to be a little bit earlier this year, so obviously yeah, it helps and gives me enough time to uh, get the training done and everything, so it, it, it can happen in September. Okay, great. Thanks a lot and good luck in the fight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Again, PBC on Spike, May 29th. Televised action begins on Spike TV at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and Pacific Time. Tickets available to the Barclays Center are priced at $250, $150, $75, and 45 You can get them at barclaycenter.com, ticketmaster.com, and at the box office at Barclays Center. See you on May 29th. Thanks for joining us on this call.